Praise the Lord of Salem. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord of Salem. Can you do it? chapter 2, beginning with the first verse, I'm reading from the Common English Bible, but you will find words in like manner. Next, we turned around and headed back toward the wilderness along the Reed Sea Road, exactly as the Lord instructed me. We traveled all around Mount Seir for a long time. Eventually, the Lord said, you've been traveling around this mountain long enough. Head north. Command the people as follows. You are about to enter into the territory of your relatives who live in Seir, Esau's descendants. They will be afraid of you, so watch yourselves most carefully. Don't fight with them because I will not give the tiniest parcel of their land to you. I have given Mount Seir to Esau's family as their property. Of course, you may buy food from them with money so you can eat and also water with money so you can drink. No doubt about it, the Lord your God has blessed you and all that you have done he watched over your journey through that vast desert. Throughout these 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. You haven't needed a thing. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And so I lift up just for the sake of emphasis, verse 3. You've been traveling around this mountain All right. All right, long enough. Pray with me. God, in this preaching moment, in this moment of ripe possibility, dear Lord, we ever so clearly and so urgently need a word from you. And so, God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. This morning, for just a brief while, uh, I want to speak with you and I would that you would pray with me on this thought. Faith for a new direction. Faith for a new direction. And I do solicit your prayers. You all know I'm not long, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet. But I do believe that the word is going to come from the Lord. Beloved, I believe this morning that I am in good company when I say that every believer desires a deep relationship with God. Amen. I believe I have at least one witness who can say that they yearn for a deep spirituality where they can hear from God daily. And if I poll the room regarding your fervent belief in God and trust in God, I am nearly certain that 99.99% of respondents of all present in this congregation would affirm that yes, my belief and my trust in God is still firm. Everyone who has dedicated their lives to following Jesus wants to agree 
that they have faith in whom they have believed. And that's a good place to pause so that we can talk a little bit about the difference between belief and faith. Howard Thurman, one of the great African-American theologians and philosophers of the 20th century says there is a valid distinction between belief and faith. Thurman says that belief is the inner consistency of a person's basic behavior. In other words, if my mind is rooted in a notion or a concept or idea, then it follows that I must act on that idea. But faith, according to Thurman, has no time attached to it. Rather, it holds within its grasp the past and the future as a single moment in time. You see, according to Thurman, faith does not seek to secure itself by the sanction of mind or by a denial of the necessity of thought. It does not fortify itself with sanctions of proof or rest its case on the generosity of demonstration. But faith, rather, envelops life and charges it with energy that sustains and holds us. Faith, beloved, is the breath of God that becomes in all living things the breath of life. I'll say that one more time. Faith is the breath of God that becomes in all living things the breath of life. And so in case you may have missed any of that, it really boils down to this thought for the believer. Belief is the believer at beginning. Faith is the believer at intermediate and advanced. You see, the songwriter said, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first, what? Believed. But another songwriter says that we've come this far by what? Faith. And so it's with this in mind that what we see is that belief is the nuts and bolts. It's the ABCs. It's, it's the starting point. But faith, faith is the anchor that carries us from end to end. Christians don't merely have belief, but we are called, church, to have faith. You see, belief in God requires that we have some background information, that we see the requisite facts and tools that help us to make up our minds. We build our belief on both teaching and experience. Stop and think about it. Think about that moment you first believed. But rather, faith in God is that unwavering notion that even though I may not see God, even though situations and times may be uncertain, even though it has not been done before, I am firm in my understanding that yes, God is real. That yes, God is still able. That yes, God is still moving in my life and the lives of those around me. That's what, that's what faith is. And you see, a preacher once put it like this. A great way to define faith is divine risk. Divine risk. Faith is a divine risk. You see, if you can see the outcome, it may not be faith. If you can map it out in these steps, it may not require faith. If you knew all the people that it would take to get to your destination, it's probably not faith. But my Bible and your Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things what? Not seen. Therefore, if our faith is not rooted in substance and evidence that we already had, it's probably not faith. Faith is the outcome of things that seem invisible. And so our text today is a visual and it serves as a challenge of what it looks like to have faith for a new direction. 
-huh. And what better book to look to when we talk about faith for a new direction than the book of Deuteronomy? All right, sir. All right, all right. Bible scholars suggest Deuteronomy is a book that addresses the problem of the distance between present and past, between tradition and the needs of the contemporary generation. And so we find here that the Israelites are at a critical juncture, poised to enter the promised land. All right, sir, all right. And you see, what was promised to them way back in Genesis was delayed by their enslavement in Egypt and was delayed also by the time lost to their wandering in the wilderness. But now we see that they are readied for a promise fulfilled. And our text today locates the people of Israel continuing to journey through the wilderness on another detour due to their shaky faith. You see, the end of the first chapter gives us a glimpse into the unwillingness of the people of Israel to heed God's command that would propel them in a different direction than where God had clearly told them to go. And can I challenge someone to reflect here real quick? How many times has God clearly given us direction? God has clearly given us a command and we still hesitated. Lord have mercy. We still didn't think we were ready. We still didn't think we had enough skills. We still didn't believe we were worthy enough. You see, sometimes even when we have faith, we begin to put a cap on how much we exercise that faith. How many of us have had seasons in our lives where we were content with just good enough? Not knowing that the good enough was what was actually hurting and hindering us. Amen. How many of us have had faith that ran out because we had gotten too concerned with our failures. How many of us have claimed a faith that says God can do anything but fail? Yet the first thing we think about when we're on the cusp of a new direction is failure. We start rattling off the what ifs. Maybe this isn't the right time. Maybe I do need to prepare more. Maybe that denial was the end all be all. Maybe that's where I need to stand. What you need to know this morning is that there are moments that we oh, need no, to hear no. God plainly. That when God says move, you need to move. When God says do a thing, you need to do it. Because the reality is you'll never be fully prepared. You'll never be fully ready. You'll never have all your I's dotted and your T's crossed. You'll never be in a position to fully equip yourself because what you lack is really what God is already in control of. You see, the text tells us that the people circled this mountain many days. My Bible says they circled it a long time. And you see, Mount Seir is one of those, one of the first mountains that we see mentioned in the first five books of the Bible and is said to have belonged to the descendants of Esau. And what is interesting here is that the children of Israel are related to the descendants of Esau. And what Bible readers know in this situation is that the children of Israel were related to the Edomites, the descendants of Esau, as they were descendants of Jacob's brother Esau. God made it clear to the Israelites that though they were related, don't touch their stuff. <laughs> don't provoke them. Because these people were already afraid of the children of Israel. You see, the Edomites were always destined to be in conflict with the Israelites. The word shows us that God can make and act on a promise to a people, however, who did not know how to show brotherly love, even as he leads a called people into their promised land. And so for those of us called to stand firm in our faith, 
for a new direction, we need to understand that sometimes we have to be careful who we engage with on our journey toward a new direction. Just because there are those who look familiar to us, just because there are those who look like us, even those who may be called our family, does not mean we have to get in everybody's face. Oh yeah, you know the saying, all skin folk ain't kin folk. <laughs> well, sometimes we still need to avoid the kin folk. Sometimes we need to avoid the people, even though they may be blood, they don't have our vision. They don't know what it is God has told us. They don't know what kind of journey God is bringing us on. There are some people who believe that just because they went on this journey this way, that other people have to go that same way. Come on, talk about it. That's a sermon for another day. I'm going to leave that alone. But this morning, we see God telling Moses to make sure the people knew that when you are on your journey in a new direction, you might indeed encounter old faces. So listen, do what you got to do. Pay them. Pay them what you need to pay them. Do what you got to do to get your water, get your food, and move on. How many of us stay in dysfunctional situations just because it's familiar to us? All right. How many of us put our trust in people who have let us down time and again because they are familiar to us? Sometimes, beloved, we can stay in dysfunctional and uncomfortable situations primarily and solely out of familiarity because we know that person we know what they're we know what they're good for we end up staying in dysfunctional situations and so God already knew that the people of Israel would be tempted to engage in something that was not a priority for their journey all too often, we let the familiar distract us from what God has before us. Sometimes we let the familiar sights and the familiar smells and the ways of doing things hinder us from what God has promised us. But today, some of us realize that we need faith for a new direction. Faith that says, I am thankful for where God has brought me from, but I am willing and I'm ready, and I'm open, and I'm receptive to where God desires to bring me. I may not know how the path is going to be. I may not know the distractions and the challenges that are going to be in my way. But I believe God. I believe God has not brought me this far to leave me. God wants us to know, beloved, as I close, looking at verse 7, that even in your wilderness moments, All right, sir. <laughs> even in your desert, even in the places where you think I'm not there, I've been with you. God says you've been in the wilderness for 40 years, but I've been with you. You've even doubted me. And you've even wondered what the next step was, even in the face of what I already told you. But I remain with you. And that is encouragement for someone today that we don't have to know what the wilderness experience is. We don't have to know what the uncertainty is for us not to achieve or do something. But what we do need to know is that God is with us. Amen. And the beauty of all this, beloved, is that we just need a little faith. We just need a little faith that one writer says is the size of a grain of a mustard seed. We just need a little divine risk to know that God sees what we don't see. God knows what 
we don't know. God has already prepared the way, even in the midst of us wondering, is this the way that I must take? Is this the direction that I must go? God has already made the way clear for those who love him. And so, beloved, we just need a little more faith. Faith in the midst of obstacles that have desired to make us fail. Faith in the midst of people who do not see where God is taking us. Faith in the middle of circumstances that seemed uncomparable to what we've been through before. We just need a little bit more faith. And oh beloved, I'm reminded of that song that says through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. So, so not just that, so I thank God for my mountains and I thank him for my valleys I thank God for the storms he's already brought me through because the songwriter said if I never had a problem I never know who could solve it I never know what faith in God's word could do so through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus And so that's somebody's encouragement today. Stop walking around that mountain. It wasn't yours to begin with. But God has a way of telling you that you've been around the mountain for too long. It's time for a new direction. It's time for a new way of doing things. It's time for a new way of believing that I can carry you through it. Verse 7 says, no doubt about it. (laughs) The Lord your God has blessed you in all that you have done. In chapter 1, you doubted me. You were confused about the way. In fact, you heard me tell you which way to go and you still doubted me. But his word in chapter 2 says, that the Lord has blessed you in all that you have done. Even the harm, even your waywardness, he's blessed you. He watched over your journey through the desert. Even in the wilderness for 40 days, the Lord your God has been with you. And guess what? You haven't needed a thing. And so that's my word for you this morning. I'm not going to jump, hop, and skip. Because some of y'all just need to know it's time for you for, to make a new direction. Oh, yeah. It's time. In the year of our Lord, 2024, at your big age, still doing the same thing. And God is saying it's time to stop circling the mountain and know that I've already been with you whole time so what do you need to do you need to move you need to make a move you need to make a decision am I going to stay in the wilderness or am I going to seek God for a new direction the doors of the church are open for somebody to make a new direction to move because you have been waiting too long and God is asking you what are you waiting on what are you waiting for 
all you, Reverend, you're doing too much yelling. You need to calm down. We are a civilized people. We hear what you're saying. It don't take all that. And listen, if that's you, fine. But for those of us who have been in the middle of some mess, we have been in the middle of some questions, we have been discerning God for a shift, somebody needs to know it's time for you to move. So the doors of the church are open. And in reality, the doors of the church are always open. But right now, is a special call for somebody to make a move in a new direction. Notice I didn't say faith for a direction. The children of Israel were going in a direction. They were going in the same direction. But somebody needs to have the faith to say, I need to move in a new direction. It could be a job. It could be a career change. It could be a way that you interact with your coworkers. I don't know. But you need to make a move so that you can be open to what God has for you. If you need to know Jesus as your Savior, and that is your new direction, you need to move. Because that's the starting point. Ministers are in the aisle to receive you. If that is your new direction, please make a move. Because right now what's happening is you are wrestling with belief. But when you choose Jesus, you move from belief to having faith. And then there might be somebody who is wrestling with an internal struggle. You know God. You believed on him, you have dedicated your life to him, but there is a struggle. There is an internal struggle that is causing you to need to move. You might need prayer. You might need the church to cover you and pray with you. If that is you, please walk out. And then there might be someone who knows God. God has been doing a new thing in you and it's time for you to have a new church home come on and walk out God is waiting on you Say it one more time. Oh, through it all. Oh, through it all. Yes, I've learned to trust. Oh, through it all. Is that so much testimony? Dear Lord, we thank you that this faith, this faith that we have, you're in the center of it all. Dear God, our faith and our hope is in you. And so, oh God, if there is someone who is still wrestling, still toying with this idea of belief versus faith, God, help, help to touch their hearts, to help them to know that they do not have to keep circling this mountain. That, dear Lord, it's all right to move because, God, you've got new promises. 
You've got a new journey ahead and you're willing and able to go with them every step of the way. To God help that person. We don't want to rush this moment. God, we want to see to it that everybody who needs to be added to the kingdom has been granted that opportunity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. One more time. Through it all. coming for prayer. Amen. I tell you what, y'all stay right here. The Bible declares that prayer is always in order. And actually, coming for prayer is a good thing because it's time for prayer. We ought to thank God. Thank God for Pastor Japaris Keith. Thank God for his word. Love the word of God because it it's, it's not only about illumination. The word of God is about transformation. Yeah, yeah. God gave this young man a transformative yeah. word today. Is, is there anybody here that God has spoken to your heart right from his man of God? Amen, amen. That, that if it's time for you and you've been discerning God to do something in your life, time for you to go a different direction, come on up. Because we're going to pray together for that Stand on your feet. We're going to pray together. We thank God for our sisters having the faith to come. That's it. That's it. calling somebody to just come. You got, you got to come. Sometimes moments are right for, for God to do something. And I feel this is a right moment. That if you're standing in the need of prayer, yeah, yeah. you ought to make it known. Yes, sir. Songwriter said it's me. Me, oh Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother. It's not my father. Not my sister. No, my brother, but it's it's me, oh Lord. Somebody need to hear it. Our my pastor, one of our pastors from Salem West, Pastor Alvin Barnett, is gonna take us. In our prayer of deed. And I just declare if you need something in your life, yes, sir. seek it right now. Seek it. Say it. Say it. <clears throat> that I declare that our God is big enough to give you what you need. What you, yes. Thank you. The Bible says the great is the Lord. 
greatly to be praised. City of our God and the beauty of His holiness. It's a good time. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we come right now in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we, we come today, Lord, after a, a really good word. Lord, we, we want to thank you, Lord. And, but first of all, Lord, we want to acknowledge your greatness. We want to acknowledge, Lord, all the times that we failed and we made the wrong decisions, the wrong choices. And you still bless us. We want to acknowledge, Lord, that when you told us to go right, we went left. But you still came to our rescue and got us all turned around. We, we want to thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for all of your goodness and your mercy thank you. that we don't deserve. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for loving us, Lord, when we were unlovable. Thank you, Lord, for showing up when nobody else showed up. Thank you, Lord, when we didn't deserve nothing. Yet you still came and gave us glory and mercy. Thank you, Lord, when we should have lost. But you turned it around and we gained. Thank you, Lord, when the doctor said there was nothing nobody could do. But you came in and you healed our body. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. The 40th number of signs said, I waited patiently on the Lord. But he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Lord, we need your ear today. We need your ear today, Lord, because we need you. We need you today, Lord. So much craziness in the world. So much evil in the world. We need a God like you. To see for the ears of life. We know you fixed the fiery furnace, but today, Lord, we need you to fix something for us. Yeah, Lord. Sometimes we need a right now, God. I, I, I know you, you, you're never late. I know, Lord, that we can't make you do nothing, but Lord, this morning, Somebody came up here and they need you. Yes, Somebody came to the altar today, Lord, and, and they need you today. Yes, and I'm asking you, Lord, to touch in the precious name of Jesus. Yes, touch yes, in the name of Jesus. Touch yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, touch. Let your power flow this morning in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the praise. It's in the precious name of Jesus. We pray this morning. Amen and amen. And he's worthy of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is good and he's worthy yeah, yeah. of your praise. It's a good time to give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise and give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory because he's worthy. He's worthy. From the rising of the sun till the going down of the
Y'all some folk who cook in the house. Sometimes the meat is better when you let it marinate. Deacon Bill Dodd roll into church. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And it helped me to remember how good God is. Uh -huh. yes, Saw so Pastor Garland shout no one leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Help me remember how good he is. That if he woke you up this morning, he's good. God, is you on your way, remember that God is good. Might not have been much, but food on your table, God is good. Clothes on your back, God is good. And then he had the nerve to bring you to the house of worship. So if you came, you ought to give him glory. Don't forget, don't forget that we are celebrating one of our own, Sister Camille. Sister Camille, stand up again. God is glorified. Oftentimes, by those who never get a paycheck, but give all their service to God with fervor, with joy, and with faith. And Sister Camille is one of those individuals. Give God praise for that. So for those who are virtual, you can give through Givelify. You give virtually online through the, through the app. To, and just when you make it out, just make Sister Camille Dover. Uh, send it in special part of the worship. That's right. We actually, we actually have a little fellowship for Sister Camille up in our conference room. Up above, there's a cake for you. I hope it's your favorite. Amen. I don't know, but I hope you There's a cake for you. So those want to go give God a glory and praise for our, our Sister Camille and then give her a gift, you can do it up there. Amen. We're going to whisk, whisk her up there. Today we are celebrating our sister. Amen. 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 So thank God again for it. Praise God. Oh, my blessed Lord. Deacon, Deacon Dodd, it's good to see you, man. It's good to see you. God is good. Amen.
to him. Him who, who was, who is, and is to come unto him. Who is able to keep us from stumbling. And to present us blameless before his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Be glory, be majesty, be dominion and authority. May it now be both henceforth and forevermore. Everybody say. to submit your tithe and offering online at www.thechurchwithzeal.org slash give on cash app at dollar sign the church with zeal via the givelify app by mail to salem missionary baptist church p.o box 817 lilburn georgia 30048 or in person at the church office on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. It's not necessary to wait until Sunday to give. Online, Givelify, Cash App, or mail-in contributions may be submitted on any day of the week. Thank you for your continued support of the ministry at Salem Missionary Baptist Church.